Hello and welcome back to the Busby Way podcast. I'm joined by Liam and it is me this week rather than Chris. Unfortunately, Chris, I think, was busy this week, so he couldn't make it this week. Um, so it's just me and Liam as per usual. How are you, Liam? Are you all right? You feeling good? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, it feels like I've been a while since I spoke to you, actually, because obviously we've not, we've not been here last week. I was I was on holiday last week, so I mean, you want me to tell because it was quite cloudy in in Greece, believe it or not. You probably I think England had better weather than we did, so uh, you know that's typical. You go abroad and, and you get worse weather, but <laughs> we're not here to talk about my holiday. We're here to talk about one United. So basically, today, in case you didn't miss it, I think United. Well, they got the three points. I, I was I was streaming. I was saying to Liam before we came on. I was streaming it on my phone because I, I was on a train. Um, so I, I caught it. Just it, it kept lagging here and there because obviously the signal's not great when you're going on in, in the countryside. But no, right, well, what did you think to it today, Liam? Did you, it was a it was a good performance from from United, or were they were they slightly fortunate? Uh, well, throughout the ninety minutes, um, I think the game itself. I think we were a bit sloppy. I think the midfield area was the obvious was the obvious part of our game, which was lacking with uh, the Fred and McTominay partnership. I still think that's a no go. Um, I think that we were we were on top for most of the game, but we couldn't find the killer ball. And every time we seemed to get in the West Ham penalty area, Martin Atkinson was letting them assault our players and letting them get away with it. So you know that was obviously a difficult thing to have to have to play twelve men throughout the whole game. Um, but yeah, I thought creativity wise, we were maybe a little bit off it. But at the same time, their goal was again like Southampton away, like Leeds United at home. It's just another complete, you know, shot from the blue because it's a, it's a, you know, we've we've got three of our four goals conceded. Um, two have been massive deflections from the edge of the penalty area, and one's been an absolute wonder strike by Luke Halen, uh for Leeds. So. Yeah, and then obviously we bounced back quickly because Cristiano has got incredible movement that can uh, that can almost get you a goal without having to really work hard for it. Because I mean, it's it's like his goal at Young Boys and his first goal against Newcastle, his anticipation second to none, leaves all the defenders for dead. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just thought we were a little bit all over the place in the midfield. We maybe lacked a little bit of control there, which is maybe what for for defensive midfielder would bring. To our side, if uh, if we were to go out and get one, so you know it was uh, it was an incredibly uh, scrappy game, but we managed to make it happen. And um, yeah, they obviously got a penalty at the end moments after our stone one of the most stonewall penalties you ever see in the history of a game has been turned down at the other end. But obviously Martin Atkinson was refereeing, so doesn't particularly surprise you. Um, yeah, I mean. <laughs> There's nothing more I can say about his performance. I'm just disgusted. It's not. There's nothing worse in sport when someone blatantly tries to cheat your team out of a win. And I think mm. he's he's physically tried his best to do this. And it go it, it, after all the shouts of top six bias yesterday or big six bias because of Southampton getting their penalty turned down the Etihad, which was again ludicrous, um, and Arsenal versus Burnley, which was probably the right decision in all honesty to uh, overturn it. Um, yeah, that's all gone out the window. Um, I think it was just a bit of a joke, but you know, first penalty saving 40 for David, I think that was so yeah. <laughs> long overdue after he let the whole Villarreal team score in the <laughs> final. But you know, at least he managed to, at least he saved a clutch one. Uh, and against Mark Noble, who I'm not, <laughs> I've not been the biggest fan of him down the years, he always seems to have something against us, he always seems to. Be one of those players who starts a fight with one of ours, like whether it was Herrera or Pogba the other year. Mm. And uh, yeah, they brought him on in the grand manner. It's so almost like a, a special moment. And um, yeah, thankfully, David decided to pull this one off rather than uh, rather than not. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's even a video or a picture of Cristiano pointing what way for David to go. But whether he listened to that, I don't know, because obviously uh, I'm going to... Mm. Unless it's that untechnical, but you go through hours of goalkeeper coaching and all that just to look at one of your main players and say, I'm going to dive this way. I mean, <laughs> it was a bit of a, you know, it was, it was just a frantic finish. And uh, Jesse Lingard's go again out of this world. Um, a bit unexpected. And I'm going to, for back to back weeks, I think it is now, mm. or maybe even three weeks in a row, I'm going to praise Nemanja Matic for his passing the goal. <laughs> That's a rarity. <laughs> it's it a rare occasion. Week. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I feel as though maybe after him having five minutes on the pitch and making more progressive passes than Fred, maybe him and McTominay could be the way forward. <laughs> but who knows? <laughs> yeah, maybe. In, oh, has it come off that? There we go. Yeah, sorry. Oh, we have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's lagging out a bit. There we go. There we go. We're all right. We're good. Having a few technical difficulties on my, on my week, but but yeah, um, yeah. You said there about Martin Atkinson uh, with the refereeing decisions, and what frustrated me the most is he didn't even go and look at it. You know, he was he was very quick to go look at the Shaw one, which all right, it's a natural position, but it's probably handball. Um, but I think you know they, they were probably right to, to look at that one. But why why not look at other one like the penalty decision? You know, you, like you say, it's a stone wall. It was quite clearly brought down. Um, and and they didn't even go review it, which I thought was bizarre as well. And then you and then you said, yeah, you mentioned there Lingard as well. It's now two and two. Does he does he maybe justify a, a start in the next game in the cup game against West Ham with it being you know he, he played for him last year on loan? Do you think he maybe he maybe justifies a start in the next game? Uh, he maybe does with a bit of cup game. Uh, I think he didn't actually do too much when he came on, but obviously. In terms of before the goal, because obviously he's got a winning goal in the end. I mean, before anyone mm. up and starts, you know, going ham. But yeah, he didn't do too much before he actually scored. But and obviously he pulled out a moment of magic that's ultimately won us the game. And me being on Sky Go uh, up here, um, yeah, I heard for someone from the flash scream and shout, yes. Uh, expletive get in when he scores <laughs> <laughs> from like a few from a few floors down. Um, yeah, I mean it was a, a wonderful goal and uh, yeah, back to back games he scored brilliant finishes and yeah, I think in the in the league cup why not why not give him a start and I think mm. uh, there's a few other boys in particular who deserve a start. I think Van der Beek does because he didn't get the chance to show it against young boys because Wan Bissaka obviously got sent off, which changed mm. the whole game plan. Uh, could be a good opportunity for Sancho, maybe just to yeah. get his uh, get a bit more game time under his belt because he also didn't have a pre season. I think United, some of our fan base is particularly, you know, a bit unsure about him, but he hasn't had a pre season. He's come into a brand new team that at the best of times hasn't been so cohesive as he'd maybe like, but you know, he'll, he'll learn to play with our players as time goes on. And obviously, he's got Ronaldo to aim for now and Bruno, and, uh, and Rashford's not far off coming back by the sounds of it. Um, so yeah, I think Sancho will more likely be a starter, um, and then we maybe will rotate with maybe Dallo coming in. I think Tellers might be a bit soon for him. I think he's only just come back in training. Dean Anderson might get in that, but uh, this is a cup game, unless we opt for Tom Heaton, but I presume it will be Dean Anderson. Um, but yeah, I mean, in terms of league form, David's pretty undroppable as it stands. I mean, saving a penalty. And then, uh, you know, just throughout the throughout the season so far, he's he's been brilliant. So, yeah, it's good to have him back on form mm -hmm. at least. Yeah, because we've said that in the last few weeks, haven't we, about De Gea? That, that, he, that you know, he's he's actually probably taken that number one spot. I think. I think, you like you say, he's undroppable. How can you drop a man after he's just won you three? Three points in the last minute, you know. Arguably, if we hadn't saved that, you know, we'd have only got one point from today. So, you know, who knows? Who knows? But it, let's, let's let's take it through before we even go, like go into the game in, in deep. Then, because in midweek we played young boys and and lost it in the last minute. Unfortunately, you know, we didn't get our luck in the midweek. We got our luck today. Do you think? Because Ollie was heavily criticised in that game for his uh, for his substitutions, and you know, maybe thinking he was going for a draw, and then decided to go for a win, and then you know, he couldn't quite make his mind up. Do you think he perhaps got his his substitutes? He's better today, you know, more spot on today than what than what was in midweek. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've I've been Ollie in from the start. You know, I'm not one of these people who 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 flip flops. I've always been Ollie, and he's the right man for it. And I think today he answered him the best way he could. I questioned his decisions on Tuesday uh, against young boys because they didn't make logical sense to me and to probably many others. I mean, Ronaldo and Bruno off, Lingard and Matic John. You know, we played without a striker and we put in a defensive midfield run for our most creative. Perhaps Pogba would have been better to come off in that game due to him not... He's not the quickest Paul Pogba covering across the ground and the most energetic, it doesn't feel like at times. So it maybe would have been better to have someone a bit more defensive-minded on for him than have Bruno and Ronaldo and Matt. And he obviously went to a back five, which invited a bit of pressure on him. 
probably a little bit unnecessarily. But, you know, at the end of the day, his game plan was thrown out a window by wan getting sent off and then you can't really help one of your own players slotting them through one-on-one with the last kick of the game. I think it's a bit, you know, it's yeah. a bit one of those things where, you know, it happens, it's happened a lot of times down the years in the history of football and it's just happened to drop on that game for us. And, uh, yeah, he answered in the best way today with his substitutes because ultimately Matic got the assist and Lingard got the goal. And uh, it's all he can do. He can, he can only show tactically that, you know, by some of these players on him, sort of you know making it happen and it was just wonderful just wonderful to see uh to see it happen uh because we we're sort of getting to the stage of the game we thought gonna finish one one this until the frantic finish happened where we score and we had the penalty and yeah absolutely delighted because another day uh it's just I, I, <laughs> there's nothing better than winning under Raleigh really because it's a club legend at the end of the day and uh yeah you know, but all the speculation of Conte coming in, I don't want him anywhere near Old Trafford, if I'm being honest. Um, you can come mm, to I, Old Trafford. Do you know what? I actually manager. agree with you. I agree with you, Liam. I, I think he, he, he reminds... Yes, he's a winner and he probably would win you stuff for that squad, but it, very much like Mourinho, I think he'd come in and it'd unsettle the squad massively and we'd have to go for a whole rebuilding project in about two or three years. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like when you look yeah. at his Inter Milan team, um, you know, he's gone and signed Ashley Young... Um, mm. He's got Sanchez. He's got to sign players who are all like 30 plus. Mm. And it's like, we've got a young squad that's promising and needs a chance to sort of grow into the, grow into the shoes that is eventually going to fill of, uh, mm. you know, trying to become ultimately the champions of England. Mm. And lo and behold, mm. if we've reached the chance, then maybe champions of Europe, which is obviously where, you know, you aim for the sky as Man United, you know, you aim for the biggest trophies that you physically can. And, to win every competition you enter uh, because of the size of the club and the traditions. So, yeah, when when all this nonsense about Conte came out, I thought, well, you know, you can come back, to, you can come to Old Trafford as a visiting manager if you ever want to come mm. to Old Trafford or on a yeah. stadium. So, nowhere near, nowhere near the club. We've we've tried this before with mm. Van Gaal, awful Mourinho. Mm. In, in hindsight, you know, we won two trophies, but was it worth sacrificing three years of progress? Not really. Mm. Uh, we just ended up in a worse situation than what we found ourselves in. So, you know, we ultimately, you know, Ollie all the way, really. He's yeah. built the whole team himself. And uh, the thing is with Ollie is people always doubt him. You mm. know, they, when he first came in, uh, or, you know, this is the most average group of players and that uh, people were slandering his left, right and centre. Oh, he Lampard's better. He'll never finish in the top four. Yeah. We get we get the one we get one decent player in, finish third. Oh, he'll never he'll never split ahead of uh, Chelsea or Liverpool. Or, or Ch- he'll never go out or finish out of Liverpool or City, mm. finish out of Liverpool in the next season. And now obviously we're fighting to to try and stay uh towards the top of the table again and to hopefully try and put some form of challenge down for the league if we can. And yeah, I think he's one of these managers that's always doubted and people have always liked to put objects or or compare saying, look at look at uh, Lampard, look at Arteta, well, one's out of a job and one yes, is about to right. Yeah, one's yeah. halfway down the table near the relegation zone, ultimately. Yeah. Um, and his team hasn't really got that much better. You know, I think... Yeah, whenever he's doubted the most, Ollie always comes up trumps, and you know he, he's he's ultimately done it today because people can say, "Oh, David bailed him out," but Martin Atkinson bailed West Ham out in all truth. So oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the one thing for me is is Ollie. He's, Ollie can take credit for building this squad because it's it's completely a squad now, but he's got to now take responsibility for what happens with this squad because you know this year, say if we finish what fourth and we don't win anything, then for me, I think Oli's got to come into question. Like I'm always Oli, and I always, and I always have been. However, this is now his team. The, the, you, know, you know what I mean? That You've got to start getting results with his team. All right, this season, we've had a good result against Newcastle and a good result against Leeds, but apart from that, it's not been really convincing. You know, today, like you say, I know obviously Martin Atkinson was a big part in, in why we were lucky today, but... 
we still had to scrape over the line and, and you know, we we failed at Young Boys. We, you know, we, we, we drew to Southampton and it's not been convincing performances. That's, for me, as, if you're getting results, then fair enough. But it, it's, it's as soon as that results, when the results start to go with that, with type of performances like that, that's when you need to start asking questions, I think. But we'll we'll talk through the game as a whole in terms of the West Ham one now. Bruno had a chance early on where he, we broke through and he and he hit the post. Uh, it was a fantastic save of Fabianski, and I must admit, I did think it was going to be one of those days where, for some reason, the opposition keeper decides to have an absolute world beater game against us because it always seems to happen. Um, but yeah, what, how did you think Bruno played today? Because for me, it was a bit of a weird one. He he seemed to go missing early on, and then as the game went on, he he started to come bit into it a bit. Do you think that's that's anything to do with Ronaldo? Because I know a lot of people do say in that in that Portuguese team that Bruno's overshadowed. Um, do you think that might be having an impact on on United as of recent, or, or do you think it's just one of those performances that Bruno has every now and again? Um, I think it might be one of those performances, but I almost felt, um, you know, he got the assist ultimately. Well, mm. it didn't go down as his assist, but it is basically an assist for yeah. Ronaldo's first. And, uh, you know, I, I, I particularly thought he got into the game a lot more later on when we brought Lingard and Sancho on. You know, it, it doesn't mm. seem a coincidence to me that once we... Because we obviously started Paul Pogba in that left position again and we had the McFred midfield. And I think the team, when we do that, is quite in, unbalanced in my eyes, at least. So I almost feel as though when Lingard and Sancho came on, it just spread out the pitch a little bit more for mm. him to operate in his space. Um because that McFred midfield partnership is something else in terms of how it how it sort of the are both good lads, don't get me wrong, and they're both, you know, McTominay is by far the better player in my eyes. And mm. McFred has his role and purpose somewhere in around the squad, but not starting every week. I mean, I think it, it must be hard to operate behind Max. So so many times where one of them just didn't clear clear the lines or clean someone out on the counter attack or Make a decisive challenge. Like I think it was, but I think that was a bit detrimental to our game because you know I, I think if we had if we had someone a bit more controlling, like you know, obviously Kante was one to get back in twenty sixteen when he was leaving Leicester, um, someone who could sort of help you control the game, you could lay it off to people. That'd be ideal. But I think the midfield battle in general, I think, scuppered our game plan a little bit. Because obviously West Ham have a good midfield with Rice and Suchek, both great players. Um, and then obviously the width. I always had a bit of an issue with the width because when you when you play all the midfielders and you almost try and go Greenwood, Ronaldo, and then you pull Greenwood out wide to the right, then you're relying you're relying on Wan Bissaka and Shaw ultimately to give you the width. And at times Luke Shaw doesn't give enough, and Wan Bissaka doesn't have a good doesn't really have a great cross on him. He gets assists here and there, but in terms of his overall crossing quality, you, you're not was not very you know you can't rely on him to be able to you know constantly on the tee hit the six yard box with his crosses you know um, for someone to run and header it in. Um, so I just think as for we narrowed up the pitch a bit unnecessarily, I think with our formation. But again, we got away with it. Um, I think Lingard seems to have done something to, to definitely develop his game since he's been away um, and now that he's come back because obviously that's two goals in two games like we said both cracking finishes um, I, I think what I did notice against uh, against Newcastle particularly from where I sit in the ground at the scoreboard end on the right of the front of the second tier mm. Lingard looks like he's making more effective runs I feel off the ball um, to make things happen and I think that obviously helps bring everyone into play a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I think Bruno got into the game more as the game went along because of perhaps the flow of the game and the, the substitutions. Because we're just a bit show, it, we're a bit slow at shifting the ball at, um, at first, I thought, and that was obviously creating West Ham putting the team up in banks, just clearing the ball left, right, and centre. Um, and yeah, so, something else that I did notice is that. How many corners did we have and not win the first header with the size of our mm -hmm. team? 
Yeah, um, I know, yeah. I must admit, I did say that today on the train with my mate I was watching it with, and, and we said, you know, there's some hate in that United team now with Varane, Ronaldo, Maguire. There's some, you know, there's some targets in there, but we don't seem to be hitting them. I don't know why, whether it's, I, it's the lack of corner ability or... I, I wonder I'm not whether, sure. it's, whether it's the general setup. I know we've got, I think it's Eric Ramsey or someone in as our, as our set piece coach from Chelsea or something. I wonder mm. whether it's for you. Obviously, do much more analysis for me. This is just me purely speculating. But I, I wonder whether mm. it's the fact that we're all stood six yards out waiting for the ball rather than running yeah. in, trying to lose markers yeah. and trying to make things happen a bit more rather than almost going. There's only marking, and we'll almost mm. only sit on them rather than yeah. you know trying to make a, a dynamic run to get to get the momentum. I don't know, but essentially you know, it got, could be. We've got Ronaldo, Varane, Pogba, mm. um, Maguire. We've got you know that's four really not. I don't. Know if there's any many teams of Premier League that have four targets like that to aim out of no. a corner. So. Yeah, no, it reminds just... me of the days when we had like Fellaini, you know, when we had like Fellaini in there, he was always a, you know, target man that we had and we had Matic, you know, when they had the height there and they've always had that height, but just for some reason, you know, you just never seem to be get set, like score from set pieces. I don't know why, whether it's something that they just haven't worked on or if it's something, because I remember with David Moyes, it was all that thing that we, do you remember when we, we scored, we, we hadn't scored from open play in, our, in how many hours and we just scored set pieces. I can't remember how, what, the, what the stat was, but yeah, it's it. It reminds me like we need maybe we need to bring David Moyes back in. Maybe maybe he needs to come in as a set, <laughs> come in as a set piece coach. <laughs> but yes, um, so I mean, like you say, there was Lingard's obviously picked some up from his game from playing at West Ham because you know he, he seems to be playing differently from what he was. Because I remember being at United and, and it was nothing flash. Like I remember maybe the loan experience would be good for him, and then he started firing at West Ham. So you never know, Ollie might have something in his plans. But I also did feel uh, good for De Gea today because I feel like he got his he got his justice. I remember you saying it was the first in in forty penalties he's saved, which is which is mental, which is obscene. Um, yeah. But I feel like he got a bit of justice today, and, and I feel like you know it's. I feel, well, I'm happy for him to be honest with you. It's 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 good for him. Um, but yeah, like we've said, I I to be honest with you, I can't see Dean coming back in and and taking his place because how can you drop him? How can you drop him? He's he's you know he's been one of our best players this season so far. I think I don't know. He's I don't like what you think about that, but I think he's probably been one of our standout players this season so far. Yeah, not been able to fault him one bit, and I think yeah. it's a it's a bit of a contrast because he's maybe a bit of a confidence player these days. Almost mm. like it seems as though when he drops his confidence a little bit, he completely drops his form in general. He just seems to to struggle, and obviously, yeah, that so that penalty. Then that he saved in my in my calculations and maybe Twitter's would be the first time since Romelu Lukaku in the 2016 FA Cup semi final against Everton. Really? Yeah, that that's how long ago it was. Because <laughs> I remember when they brought him in, I remember my dad saying, "Oh yeah, he's supposed to be really good at saving penalties because he just <laughs> saved one Spain when he first came in." Um, Bam, in like the, one of the it too. <laughs> yeah, 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 he did. Yeah, so I mean, who knows? He, he might have worked on them since Europa League, and it looks like he has he has done because he's he's saved one today. Uh, we'll talk quickly then uh, about the young boys as much as I don't really want to, but we'll we'll just have a quick say on it, a quick mm, couple of minutes. What did you think to it? Because for me, they, they were dire. They were awful. Um, it, it's, it feels like a completely different feel, feeling now from what we're feeling on on Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, yeah, what did you, what did you make of that performance against Young Boys? Probably best we didn't have a live podcast after the game the way I was feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we had two shots on target, which sums it up. I mean, <laughs> we just seemed to be penned yeah. in for a few minutes straight away at their ground, uh, and it was just. <laughs> I was just sat there thinking to myself throughout the second half, just looking at my watch, thinking this is the time of my life that I'll never be getting back. You know, it was yeah. just it was yeah. so frustrating just playing a back five. We went strikeless, as I said. The substitutions were so left field, and obviously we give away a bag at the end, which it puts more emphasis on to our Champions League group now. Uh, Atalanta and Villarreal, and then obviously we have young boys again, you know, 
not the end of the world when all your home games is for, is the old fashioned rule in Europe when all your home games and you should go through. And mm. uh, you know that's definitely going to apply here. Got to win all the home games, and then you know when we play Villarreal away, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll put them back into the Europa League as a bit of um, snide revenge. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, um, <laughs> there it's a case of uh, yeah, just frustrating. Uh, but but Twitter obviously has its thing for stats and. They kept on saying about people were mentioning like, oh, Ollie's only won like four out of seven Champions League or four out of ten Champions League games or something. And I was like, mm. yeah, but we've had PSG away, Barcelona home and away, PSG mm. home and away again, <laughs> Leipzig home yeah. and away, Istanbul. And then it was like, oh, Mourinho, Van Gaal won this many. It's like, oh. Yeah, but who did they have? Van Gaal's group, which we didn't get out of CSK Moscow Wolfsburg and PSV Eindhoven we didn't get yeah. out of it Mourinho yeah. got us knocked out in a round of six to Sevilla it was hardly much better <laughs> yeah well <laughs> you know, yeah it's true after having, after having a group of CSK Moscow Basel and Benfica you know mm. It, mm. it's not like they were particularly given all these hard games you know Twitter has this weird thing where it's you know absolute heavy agendas and without actually focusing more in depth on the stats they always seem to just to sort of you know they just seem to shovel out stats from the middle of nowhere and just go oh yeah look at this this is a disgrace look at this you know and it's like if you actually look in depth and it actually makes sense as to why <laughs> because when you know mm. our squad wasn't capable when Oli first came in of matching up to Barcelona and PSG, but we might get over the line in, in some sort of the Champions League games against PSG, etc. So, yeah, I mean, the young boys won. We've just got to bounce back from it. And we obviously bounce back against West Ham, but we've got to obviously make sure that we bounce back in Europe because if we lose if we lose two games, we'll be staring down the barrel. Obviously, Villarreal won't make it easy for us at Old Trafford. But... Um, when I looked at Ronaldo's stats the other day, I think, I think, don't quote me on it, but he had scored more goals than games against Villarreal. So, That's ridiculous. I'm pretty that sure. I am pretty sure. I mean, I'll. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'll quickly have a look now, but I'm pretty yeah, sure. Like that. <laughs> Ronaldo had a better, a... better goals than games stats. If that's true, because well, he obviously he's played him in the Liga, so he'll he'll know what he's what he's coming up against. However, this is an Unai Emery Villarreal, though, isn't it? Whereas they're very hard to break down, they're hard to attack against. Um, but I mean, if that's the case, that is absurd. You, you know, I mean, it's well, it's actually right hmm. in the Liga, so we'll discount the the four nil nil draws that we had with him in the Champions League, right? <coughs> 13 goals and five assists in 15 games for Real Madrid against them. That's that's obscene. That is obscene so, record. You know, it, <laughs> if that doesn't score um, against them in like the final, then I don't know what does. <laughs> well, if you haven't bought your ticket for Villarreal with Man United, then go buy a ticket for Villarreal with Man United. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, Ronaldo will be scoring. Um, but yes, uh, now we've said that, you watch, it's going to be a drab nil nil draw. You can, you can just say it, can't you? <laughs> I mean, I'll I mean, all of our other four games against Villarreal in the Champions League have ended up as no no draws. Well, yeah, it's true. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> so we've got probably, to probably... look at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can say if you were, if you were a betting man, nil nil. That's <laughs> probably what you're going to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, anyway, we'll look forward now. We will we'll we'll look away from that. But in terms of the next game, we've got we've got West Ham in the cup. So it seems like it's a bit like deja vu. We'll be playing them again, but we're playing them at Old Trafford this time. Do you expect them to set up quite similar to how they were, were, did today? Because obviously it worked. Would you would you not change a winning formula? Or like you say, would you rotate and perhaps give someone maybe like Dean Anderson a run and Van der Beek, who probably deserves a run in? Um, do you think you do you think he'll set up differently or or similar? I'd, I, if it was me, I'd slightly set up a little bit differently, but I think he will. It will set up in a similar manner, I think. But it will obviously just change a few personnel for it being cup and to get the rotation. And I'd like to see maybe Matic and Manderbeek in the middle, just because they haven't played today uh, against West Ham. Um, 
I'd like to see them two set up in the middle and see, because with it being a home game, naturally you can always get away with a little bit more in home games in terms of your setup. So I'd like to see those two play um, in the middle just to, you know, see what they can offer. They can't be less fluent or less uh, cohesive than the two today. Um, as much as, you know, they both grafted and tried to get stuck in, but they were just a little bit ineffective, which is ultimately going to be where maybe things could be won or lost for us this season in that area. But um, yeah, the cup game in midweek, uh, it's a bit weird because obviously last season in in the round, these rounds, obviously this is our first round. It was the second round last time, I think. We played Brighton back to back after having a madness yeah, against them where where yeah. Bruno scored after full time from the penalty yeah. spot. <laughs> so, Remember it well, know, yeah. We, we played in the league in the league cup and we just we come and we beat them and I thought <laughs> the weekend's game took years off my life. So why couldn't we do this in the <laughs> in the, in the weekends? But um yeah. Um hopefully we just uh we take full confidence now and we've been good in our home games. We've been really good. So hopefully we can, you know, just blow them away or, yeah, I mean, I, we'll probably make some change. Whether Ronaldo starts again or not, I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me if he does, but yeah. I'm not sure how, how far away Cavani is. Um, but yeah, again, looking forward to it. I think the League Cup is a good isn't a cup to underestimate because realistically mm. every cup, especially some things like that, is a good chance to get over the line for a first trophy. Yeah. Um, especially remember... when Oli needs one, especially when Ollie needs one desperately as well, because a lot of question marks surrounding Ollie's capabilities at winning trophies. You know, there's been comparisons to Pochettino, hasn't there and stuff. And, uh, well, the semi-finals we've lost. You know, the, I think Oli really needs to be focused on this club. It's not a cup, sorry. It's not one that really you can be afford to be playing a weakened side like he did against Leicester in the semi-final of the FA Cup last year. It's 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 one of those ones that he really needs to take seriously. But sorry, Liam, you were saying. Um, yeah, I was just going to add um, when we drew one-one with Rochdale um, mm. and one on penalties <laughs> that famous day. Um, <laughs> In the in the notes in the program notes, I always I, I always bring this up when we play in the league. I specifically remember reading Ollie saying the 2006 League Cup win against Wigan sort of pushed us on to become mm. a better team because obviously we'd gone a few a few ropey years where you know two three we won the league, three four we won the FA Cup, but obviously Rio had all of his uh, ban and that. Uh, four five trophyless. Five six league cup, six seven league title, man. Seven eight league title, Champions League. Eight nine league title, league cup. You know, it sometimes just getting one will just spur you on to uh, to pushing on to be a better side because the only way we can get experience of winning trophies is by doing it ourselves and winning trophies. So, you know, this is a good opportunity uh, of a league cup because often you know. You get a lot of shocks in it because teams see it as a free hit and a free chance. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see us uh, just get over. Well, of course, everyone would like to see us get over the line and to get one under under our belt. You know, um, yeah. I mean, it's got to be interesting. Obviously, we've got West Ham and our <laughs> neighbours across the city have got the usual Papa John's trophy draw against Wickers at home. <laughs> You know, <laughs> if they can sell it out for twelve pound fifty a ticket, unlike Leipzig, we're giving them away, putting them in chocolate bars. <laughs> I'll be Put putting them in McDonald's, we're not believe. I'll be putting it in postcode lottery. You know, they'll be flogging them out left, right, and centre. And I saw, you know, I saw just... someone, I saw someone say on Twitter that, that, that lost the wallet, and someone had given it back to him with two city, <laughs> <laughs> city tickets in it. Oh, dude, Twitter's been gold for stuff like that. But then looking forward again from that, we've got Villa at the weekend, so we'll preview both because obviously I think it'll be before the next one we do we've got Villa would you expect that to be three points even though they have probably just come away with a really good win against Everton they've just won 3-0 against a good Everton side and then if you look at our fixtures after that that's when the tough run starts so after Villa we've got Villarreal Everton Leicester away Atlanta Liverpool Spurs away Atlanta away City at home and then you have Watford and Villarreal then you've got Chelsea away Arsenal at home you know, it's a tough, it's a very tough few fixtures. 
And I feel like to to come out of that, that that'll be, for us, that'll be the make or break of our season, I think. I think if you come out with that with barely any points, you know, fans will be calling for Ole. Whereas if you win this Villa game and you kick on and get momentum... You know, it, it's a chance to potentially take away quite a lot of points and put up a good challenge for the league if you come out of that with with a good few points. What what would what would you expect them to do at Villa? Would you expect them to? I know obviously it's at home, so you'd expect us to have the home advantage. The crowd will be fired up for it. Do you think it'll be three points, or do you think it'll be one that United might struggle in again? I think we should be aiming. Well, obviously we always aim for three points, but I think we should be making this uh, a decent win. I mean. You know, we beat Villa last season by the skin of our teeth with a with a penalty, and then we know he obviously last kick of the game. I remember Keenan Davis. Um, Davies got a ball down late on, and Eric Bay flew in and uh, managed to make an incredible block late on. Yeah. And we all the players went and hugged him, and you know, mm. it, Villa and you know, even away at Villa, it was a relatively difficult game, and that was always when Maguire got injured. It's sort of last season off a little bit, um, but I think yeah, Villa. It was mainly Grealish that caused a lot of problems last season, but obviously it's yeah. a bit of a new team now. Um, it's going to be interesting, that's for certain. We won't have Twanzebe, obviously no. our player. Um, mm. Leon Bailey looked like he went off with an injury, didn't he, at the weekend? Yeah, which is a shame for him because he's only just got back and it was a nice mm. goal as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Villa are such an yeah, odd one. Didn't he, didn't he come on in the 60th minute, get an assist, get a goal and then go off injured for 10 minutes later and win man of the match? I, I think, think so, yeah. <laughs> Something ridiculous. So I think he'll be a hell of a player, but whether he'll be available against us, I'm not too sure. I don't know how severe the injury is at the time of yeah, recording. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, like you say, it'll be a weird one, I think. I think because it's like you say, it's a relatively new Villa side. We've got Danny Ings in there who's firing still. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, like you say, with teams like this, you've got to be getting three points. If you want to try for the league, you've got to be getting three points against Villa, I think, you know. And like you say, Grish isn't there anymore. He's gone to City. Um, so, yeah, I, I pers- personally expect three points, but we'll see. Probably coming back here and we'll, we'll be out the cup and we'll have lost to Villa. And. Everyone will be calling for all his head again. We, it's, we, you we just, just never know. Try, right? uh, our two games in a row record isn't really a good one, is it? So no. No. we just need, because we said this on the last podcast, me and Chris. Hopefully, we can get two wins in a row, and then young boys happened. You know, yeah. we're two one loss. So. <laughs> yeah. Because we didn't we didn't we, have, we we went through a period where since we started the podcast, we hadn't won back to back weeks, wasn't it? Something ridiculous. Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. We kept having over midweek games through the COVID era, so it's like back to back games. I think it took us like months to finally do it because we did stuff yeah. like losing at home to Sheffield United and drawing one one at West Brom and stuff like that. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, well, ridiculous. well, hopefully, hopefully we come back this time next week with uh, with two wins in the bag and we're through, and we have got an easy draw. We've got a Man City draw in the next round of the cup, so oh, let's hope let's, let's we get that. Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Well, it's been a pleasure, Liam. It's been a bit of a short one, but we'll we'll wrap it up there because, to be honest with you, nothing's really happened off the field that I can think of. Can you, other than the Raiola comments? We'll touch on that quick catch before we wrap up the Raiola comments because. He came out this week, didn't he, and said about Paul Pogba is flirting with Juventus again. And there's all that talk of Pogba and potentially playing for a move. Um, what, what what do you think about that? Because we've, we've spoken about Raiola countless times on this podcast and, and then there's all these rumours about ha- us getting Haaland. And for me, there's no way they're dealing with Raiola again if he if he's coming out and, and doing all this with Paul Pogba. Um, what What's your opinion on, on Raiola? Uh, obviously, I can't <laughs> say it's spletives. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I have to use an in, in mind paraphraser. Um, I maybe should have wrapped it up when I was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just a he's just a bit of a bad a bad a bad egg, isn't he? Yeah, um, shaped like one anyhow. Um, but he's uh, you know it, it, it's just a case of uh, yeah, it, it doesn't surprise. Nothing surprises with this. Um, right, oh, uh, always plays his nonsense games. He plays mm. games of cat and mouse to try and up people just to. Boost his brand exposure because he's almost created a, a brand for himself and uh, mm. to try and you know attract interest because he's a he's a money money obsessed man um, <laughs> and uh, yeah oh I mean <laughs> yeah yeah obviously he's just a money guy so he will try and naturally take as much as he can from it mm. I don't see why he go to Juventus <laughs> no. because you know. 
we've just got Ronaldo and they've just got Moise Keane, in all yeah. honesty. I mean, yeah, Moise yeah. Might become a, he might become a good player, but I mean, we're here for now to try and win him post-28, mm. 29. So yeah. he's not here for five years' time. He's here for now. So No, you know. well, and also, you look at us where, you know, La Liga at the moment, all right, if Real Madrid get Mbappe or Haaland, then you could argue that potentially that they're on, back on the up. But... You look elsewhere, Barcelona are ruined. You know, they're in debt, the countless hundreds of millions of pounds in debt. You might have to, you know, release some players because of that much contracts and stuff. Real Madrid are struggling. Bayern Munich are a one team league. Um, PSG, potentially, that's maybe the one that you could argue. You know, they, they've got a decent squad. A decent squad. Um, but, uh, you know, that's the only other team I could see him at is PSG, I think. And yeah. within Flutter and Juventus, I, I, can't, I can't see it. Yeah, I mean, P- you say decent squad for PSG, so decent under Herrera bailed him out against Club Bruges. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah they didn't get last Bruges, could they even? No, that's Messi, Messi got the chance and he put it over the stadium. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I haven't seen it actually. So I've not watched the highlights of that one. I, I, I've watched the City and the Liverpool one, but I haven't watched the PSG one. But um, yeah, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. But I think, to be honest with you, like you say, I think it's, it's he's a money man and he, he's trying to get pop up with more money, which is what his job is effectively. Which fair play. I mean, we'll, we'll see. I personally, I think he'll sign a new deal if Bruno does. I think Pogba will sign a new deal if Bruno does because they seem to be building a good relationship. There was that video going around, wasn't there, of Bruno going up to Paul Pogba's mum. Um, after the game so we'll see we'll see but it's been a pleasure Liam thank you for joining me as per usual um, if you haven't already make sure you check out all the content that goes out on the local TV channels not just the Manchester one there's ones for all over the regions I know there's a Midlands one there's a Leeds one uh, there's a Liverpool TV make sure you go check them all out because there's some incredible content that goes out on there um, and yeah we will see you probably around the same time next week we seem to be making this this 6 o'clock on a Sunday our, our regular space so you never know, we might keep it, or you never know when we'll be back, to be honest with you. It depends on availability, doesn't it, really? But um, we will see you all next week. Thank you for joining, and goodbye.